What is good guys? I hope you're all having a good day and welcome back to the videos where today we are having some more fun with the 13B. Last video you guys would have seen we took out the R33 on track and it was brilliant drifting it around. But it's time to face reality. This car is still in the garage and I want it to be out on the road. So today we're going to be having some more fun replacing some stuff just checking over some stuff that we've done. So before I head down to Rotary Motorsport, um, they have a few gaskets. So the intake manifold and the upper plenum and everything else as well. There's two gaskets that hold all that sort of stuff on. So we're gonna go collect that today. And that means we should be able to finally bolt down, um, actually as, as well as, as much as we get some of these little little boys down there, we've got to, got to try and figure out exactly what size goes in there and block them off really quickly today too. As long as we are holding the fuel pressure that's in there and we get a uh, lower intake manifold gasket, we can fish, uh, We can effectively just bolt all that on today. But first of all, um, I had a quick chat to Ben and he said, uh, well, at the moment, I'll quickly show you guys what's happening. Um, so at the moment, when the car is off, it doesn't do anything, of course. When I do that, we obviously get power, but we don't get fuel pump. So, checking over, what do we have on our readout? Yeah, I don't even think it's working. Maybe we're flat. Could we be flat, potentially? Oh yeah. Battery voltage is at 6.5. We must have been draining some power somewhere. God damn. It's moving. Not in the way I anticipated, but it's moving. Alrighty, so, we're gonna be able to find some areas in here. Oh, I haven't even shown you guys this one video. I, I did my engine bay in the R33, it looks sick. So I didn't film any of it, but the other day I got really bored. I was here all weekend. So I just got back from the track. It was all mucky, it was all oily, it was disgusting. So I ended up doing a whole bunch of stuff, I cleaned it up. We painted the uh, the covers in this awesome like Tiffany blue, kind of like turquoisey color. Looks sick, I actually did a really good job with the paint on this one here. Like it's still a little bit orange peely, but I'm pretty stoked. You guys can see the cam cover there, it looks sick. But um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked at how this came out. Definitely tied the whole bay together. And we also cleaned up all of this. There's like, there's no gunk or muck or anything around anywhere. It looks so good. So um, yeah, no, that's cool. All right, we'll get some jumper cables and we'll see if we can uh, get this thing to prime at least. Cause all I want to do is check whether that will hold fuel pressure. So yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right, so I just checked the car. The car's reading the car. <laughs> I just checked, oh, now voice break. I just checked the RX-7. It's 11.17. I just checked the R33 and it is 12.7. Um, so I don't think it's really gonna make much difference, but, but if I can make something work, then I'm gonna be happy. So either way, I still can't hear the fuel pump. All right, so my next bet is because I disconnected so many grounds and stuff on the engine, like this one here looks like a pretty important ground and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just gonna like do stuff and ground stuff and maybe that, because I, I have the I have the car on. So I'm just gonna ground stuff and get it all sorted and maybe potentially something might do something or everything. So I'm just gonna literally touch this to the block and fingers crossed. Oh, <laughs> that is not tight. That is definitely not tight. <laughs> so I found a ground that works. <laughs> Look at this though. Whoa, okay, that is definitely not correct. <laughs> Did I even tighten that? God damn. This might be a reason. <laughs> we'll tighten that one up real quick. <laughs> All right, so we're just checking around for some more leaks. I'll just tighten that one up there. And um, I don't know if you guys can see, but our fuel pressure right there is around about 20 psi. So I just keep tapping it. So you guys can see we're getting 40 psi. And we have no injectors leaking. Beautiful. Well, that's excellent. That is absolutely excellent. So that means Theoretically, all of my injectors holding 40 psi fuel pressure. I'm fairly certain that, well actually, I'm, I'm actually really happy about the fact that only one fitting that I didn't tighten up um, was let loose. 
and all of this work down here, all of these lines, everything down here was done perfectly. So that is excellent. So today I'm gonna also today I'm gonna also work on just getting a little mounting thing for down here. Just get these lines a little bit nicer. I'm probably gonna end up cutting this line here and making it a little bit shorter. That way I can just run them both um, equally along the back there and that way I can keep it all away from the heat and stuff like that, so that's cool. I also went against the white piece idea. Um, so Sam said it might have been a good idea. Um, I did ask some of the rotary guys as well as Ben. Um, they all have it set up like this and at the end of the day it was just gonna be more fittings and more line. Um, they said this, is, uh, this was fine, so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and um, if it becomes an issue later, I'm gonna worry about that at a later date. Um, but yeah, Ben said it's fine. Uh, we should be fine with that. So yeah, theoretically, let's head down to um, RMS, we'll go get the lower intake manifold and then we can eff effectively bolt that up and we should be all good to go. Um, this doesn't have to move out the way anymore. All I gotta do is basically take this off and I will put some OMP block off uh, bolts down there. I can even, even if I don't get them today, I should be able to do it um, at a later date anyway. But um, I just wanna, wanna get that all sorted. And then we can also add this coolant line here. This coolant line, basically, um, if you guys remember when we were taking everything apart, this coolant line goes to the throttle body and then across the engine and then back over here and then back into there. We just removed all of those hard lines. So we're just gonna do a uh, quick little uh, uh, quick little hose straight from there to there. It's going to eliminate a whole big mess of hoses down here and a potential failure point um, at the throttle body. So um, we live in Australia, always freaking hot. It's never snowing, so we don't really have to worry about cold start at all. So that's completely fine. So um, yeah, I guess the next step is we'll head down to RMS. We'll go get that lower intake manifold gasket um, and we'll bolt this up and then Oh, this is getting scary. I can't believe it. It's holding fuel pressure. This is cool. This is so cool. Time for a quick rip in Old Faithful. We'll go down and get some, uh, get some gaskets. Hell to the yeah. Whoa. All right here guys, so we just stopped off at RMS. And uh, I want to give a massive thank you to this bloke right here as well. Um, Corey was actually one person that I think has been watching me before, like, well before I got the RX-7 and he actually messaged me um, a couple of months back when I first got it and um, sure enough I was telling him even though we're going to be running pretty much wastegate pressure which is 40 psi on the 50 mil turbo smart wastegate it would be nice to see if we can control some boost um, if we do plan to go above that maybe up to 16 um, potentially 17 um, we just want to keep it safe obviously with the um, on being on 98 just for now um, so uh, I want to give a massive thank you to Corey because um, in his even though his car is completely dead at the moment, it's getting for a rebuild, um, he had this Mac valve lying around. So he actually donated this Mac valve to the build. So I want to give a massive thank you to Corey. Um, and then also we got our gaskets. So now the next thing to do is to head to Motorsports Accessories and see if we can find a block off for this right here. Even a grub screw or something like that. Um, it would be nice to see if I can find an actual bolt itself because I kind of need to seal it off because it's part of the sort of combustion chamber. Um, we will end up having a little bit of like a We'll end up having like a little compression leak or something like that. So uh, I just got to go try and find a fitting that's going to fit this for the OMP. And then we can bolt everything up and we'll be mint. Hell yeah. Oh, and also Ryan for making an OMP block off. Hell yeah. We can go install that tonight. And he actually pad a coat of the black for me. How nice of him. Alrighty, so once again, the boys at, uh, at Motorsports Accessories absolutely hooked it up. So uh, got some more lines to make the fueling lines a little bit nicer to, um, to route and stuff like that. So that's all G. We got that all sorted. Um, and then also, so um, I was recommended premix from basically all the blokes that run rotary stuff here in Brisbane and um, they all use Colts. Um, I believe Bennett RMS uses something different or something along those lines. Um, but Penrite actually do a, um, a 10 tenths race caster for carts and stuff like that. Um, they also run these in 13 Bs as well. So we ended up grabbing some of that at least just so we can get it down to RMS or something like that. Um, it's only one little tiny bottle. So, you know, I'm not really like in deep with a massive big 20 liter bottle or something like that just yet. So, so if Colts does come back into Australia um, with some stock, which would be nice, then um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, we also got some stealth fittings so that way uh, we can block off the OMP. So that right there is all sorted. We've got two 
We got two OMP block offs, and then we also ended up getting some uh, Dash 645, so that way we can make those two lines around the back of the engine a little bit nicer. Um, I'm gonna end up cutting off uh, one of those lines just so that way we can um, just so that way we can tighten up those bends and that way it's not leaning basically on the transmission um, and that way we can just zip tie them both up out of the way uh, and eventually we can get some little like clamps and actually make it look all nice and pretty behind the actual 3rd MB there. Um, so yeah, massive thank you to guys at Motorsports Accessories once again for absolutely hooking it up. They do an amazing job here and they always have the fittings that I need even though today they didn't, well they did. They did, but everything everything that I wanted was just out of stock. So, um, but they made everything work for me. Everything's all sorted. Time to head home and we're gonna redo some fuel lines and then we can use that gasket and we can attach our lower intake plenum and then I can go make this video hopefully by tonight. <laughs> so fingers crossed guys, we got this. Let's do it. By the way guys, just wondering, is it just me or is it like, in Skylines, aircon really drastically changes the way that the power is delivered in this car. Like it is really, really boggy and really, really slow with the aircon on. I'll see if I can show you guys what I mean, but it's like, Like with the aircon on, it just, it saps all power. It's just really bad. Like you can feel it when the compressor kicks on, you can feel everything. I don't know, is that just an RV thing or is that like a, you know, new compressor might help sort of thing. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Oh, the goodies are here, back home. So one thing I did want to quickly add just before we get into the rest of today's video is um, just how, massively out of proportion i just got myself into and just throw myself into the deep end with the rx7 and i'm so happy i'm doing it all myself even though it could probably be cheaper literally just to give it to someone and say hey here's a turbo here's a car make it work but um i'm really enjoying doing all of this stuff myself like originally it was just going to be a turbo i was going to keep you know the power fc the stock injectors and everything else as well but then to make it you know nice and reliable and not max out our uh, stock injectors we ended up getting some bosch injectors so we ended up doing that and then all of a sudden because we've got two thousands we need to go with a new ecu and i'm so happy that i've been able to do most of it myself this is the biggest challenge that i've ever attempted by myself and i'm so far working my way through it and i'm understanding everything and i'm very very excited about that but just like little things like today you know even just going out and getting this little bag of parts right here ended up costing me to almost $300 straight up. So therefore, so already that's a massive big hit, you know, my monthly budget of how much I give myself to work on this car. So, so fingers crossed, we should be all good right now. We have two weeks left to get everything sorted before we go out and get the fabrication work done for the turbo, which is gonna be very, very cool. So before that, uh, basically we're pretty much all sorted. I have the OMP block off bolts to go in today and then we also have the, basically everything to get this sorted and on properly today. Um, however, whilst we were out at uh, Motorsports Accessories as well, we ended up getting some 45 mil adapters for these right here. So what we're gonna be able to do now is we're going to be able to fix up these fuel lines and that way we don't have such a, a harsh kink right here and that way we can actually you know plug in our injector down here because um, <laughs> at the moment we can't so that's all good that's no worries at all so now that we just got all of our fuel system all tightened up and everything we're now going to pull apart both the rear ends there and we're going to shorten the line uh, or figure out exactly which one I want to just use like a little uh, 45 adapter and which one I actually want to physically remake the line. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to remake the bottom one anyway, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna put the 45 on the bottom line and cut all that up, so that's all good. Um, but yeah, we'll make everything work. Hell yeah, it's gonna look sick. Basically putting everything back together, I spilt 
that much fuel. I'm gonna have to clean up, obviously, before Dan gets his hands on this thing because welding and fuel would not be fun. So, we'll clean all that up. I don't know if you guys can see, but we've just managed to work around with some of the fittings that we do have here, and it's actually gonna look really nice. So, um, instead of going down with the heat of the, the trans tunnel, we're now gonna go up, and we have heaps of line ready to go. So that way we can basically have one line go up there against the firewall and we can get some nice little P-clips. We can basically just end this right about here or so. So I'm pretty happy with the location of the fuel pressure reg. With the fuel pressure reg, there's just heaps of fittings on it. I'm just glad that it's over the cold side of the engine. Um, so if anything ever happens or fails there, we should be all good. So, as you guys can see, we can kind of wrap that up out of the way and using a 90 degree we should be able to tape off about there-ish and I will check it in just a second so now what we can do is we can kind of cut that line about there or so and then our fitting can just sort of sit but, uh, yeah so we're, we're gonna go to a straight fitting about there or so Basically gonna mount that straight up parallel with it. And then you can have it so it's just tucking up underneath that line right there. And it goes straight down into a 45. And that looks brilliant. Nice and all tucked up out the way. All right, so I'm just making up some lines right now. Um, so this is already my first shortened line. I don't know if you guys can see that, but uh, we have a 45 which goes from the fuel pressure rig and this is gonna to go to the return from the second uh, secondary feed injector rail. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Now, we have the second one, which we're gonna be converting to a 45. So we're both gonna, so both of these lines are gonna have 145 on each side. Should make it look pretty cool. I'm doing that completely wrong. It's kind of cool, um, making AN lines. Uh, it's definitely something that's uh, a lot more daunting than it really should be. Like, it's actually fairly straightforward. Um, just make sure you get yourself a really good pair of cutters. Um, tape off all the, the braids, or tape off exactly where you want to cut. Cut it. And I don't have any fancy tools or anything. Um, but a vice would definitely be uh, something that you should look into when you're making these. Um, there we go, so that's all, all in there. And then literally once you have one end in it, mind my... Uh, AN spanners, that's what they're called. Simply just wind them up like that, and that gives it a seal. And I'll show you guys exactly what that seal looks like in a second, because I've actually just pulled apart the AN lines that I've just done for the first time. And um, it's pretty cool to see just how these actually seal. So you do these up to as tight as you can go, and then that creates your seal right there is awesome. So now we have this beautiful braided line. This little 45 will be able to move and do stuff, but that's the way that that looks, which is awesome. Um, and the way that it actually seals is, um, you guys can see this end right here. I'll see if I can focus on it right there. You guys can see that end right there. It's obviously uh, fairly small. This is a dash six line, dash six braided line. And that end there has been pressed out and worked into the fitting. So what what they do is they kind of like, is you put this end in first and that sort of is the outer seal. And then it has like a tapered fitting that sort of you slip the hose onto and then they sort of crush and, and they sort of pull the hose out and crush it at the same time. And it gives it an extremely tight seal. Like there is no way I am ever gonna be able to pull that apart. There is no way that my fuel pressure is gonna push that apart and get fuel past it. So. These lines are great. Highly recommend trying and doing it yourself. It's a lot of fun. Rightio, so we have our two beautiful brand new lines right there. But before we do that, we are going to put the plugs in the OMP. So hopefully my camera will just stay there without falling over. Should be nice. So I'm just gonna quickly move the intake plenum again. So I didn't bolt it up properly the first time. So this is going to basically get rid of everything that we have to do down here. The only thing we'll have left to do is to extend the um, the wiring for one of those injectors there. So let's get this out of the way for two seconds. Um, and so those little fittings are basically going to fit down in here. Um, and they have to seal off properly because 
Uh, this is actually going in the, into the combustion chamber. So these nice little black fittings, actually really, really nice, just by stealth. And they actually come with a crush washer as well, which is exactly what we need. These are never coming out, the engine as well. And the reason I went to Motorsports Accessories about these is because I didn't know whether it was a tape or thread or not. Um, apparently it's just a standard, standard 10, 10 mil thread. Let's go and grab an Allen key real quick and I'll be able to tighten them down. All right, so I've tightened them both up and I've said the magic words, which is that's not going anywhere. So now we can chuck this on again. Once again, just loosely. I don't know whether I'm gonna have to pull it back off again yet or not. All right, then we can chuck in one of the Hannaford bolts. Best thing is, is when this is all done up really tight anyway, I don't have to stress too much. Now we can do the two fuel lines. So, we'll just grab a small one, which is gonna go, actually we have the big one first, which is gonna to go to the bottom. So this one here is gonna be our feed. Chuck that down there. sick check this out how much nicer of a setup is that right there we still have this massive big loop right here and I still need to sort of get the coolant down in there somewhere but I wonder if I could just move that I'm probably just like a press fitting or something I should be able to move it um, but you guys can see just how nice those lines are now routed up around the back looks so much better can finally plug in my injector down there which is gonna be nice we have so much room down there for that so much room for activities and these two lines match up so beautifully there and just come straight around there. Looks so good. So the next step is the OMP uh, delete, which I had the plate. I have been leaving stuff everywhere. Um, did I, where did I put it? God damn. Ah, uh, yes, I really should move some stuff. So um, this is the OMP delete for the Series 8. So you guys can see that this uh, sort of like shape right here uh, does resemble the sort of shape of that down there. Um, so what we're gonna be doing, that already has an O-ring there. We should just be able to bolt it straight on. Yeah, it should be as simple as that. As long as it's not leaking oil when we start it, we should be fine. I'll set you guys up there so you have a good view. Um, you guys can see there is an O-ring down there. If you guys don't have an O-ring, I would highly suggest getting an O-ring. It honestly looks like there's not even a slot for it. It's kind of just like, a, it's kind of just sitting there. Oh well, we can utilize it anyway. So what we're gonna do? Whoa, that was a that was a spanner. So this isn't exactly a kit as such. This is more so just RMS made these. So if you guys want one for your own, definitely hit up RMS in Brenda. All right, now just tighten them all evenly so they all go in. That one now is a little bit harder, but that's all right. So now what this is going to do is this is going to eliminate your oil metering pump. Because we've now got rid of the oil metering pump, we're just going with straight premix nowadays. Um, reasons being, I don't know if you guys watched Rob Dumb's video, um, the OMP uh, injects oil onto your rotors, uh, or onto your apex seals, so that way there's always something between your apex seals and the rotor housings itself. So when you actually do that, I believe what Rob Dahm was saying, is that you have the wrong oil that's basically like, it's supposed to be like two stroke oil. Uh, it doesn't burn very clean. So when you're using the standard engine oil, well, kind of like just utilizing one oil type for two different purposes. One of them, obviously you want to lubricate the engine and there's oils that do that really well. And then you want one that also burns clearly and doesn't leave carbon deposits on the rotors themselves. And so what he was saying is, deleting the OMP basically means you can run a, a better oil to burn off rather than use your engine oil and leaving carbon deposits on the actual rotors themselves. Um, as far as I'm aware, the OMP is still a great thing to have. And if you guys do have a Series 8 or an RX-8 or something like that, the OMP does a brilliant job. It is going to work for you. However, if you do want to premix yourself and just have the peace of mind that you're doing it yourself, then I would highly recommend it. And then also, if you're going E85, you need to do it anyway. So going E85, you need to delete the OMP. But as you guys can see down there, OMP delete is done. And now we are OMP-less. How good. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, what else is left to do? Um, 
I guess install that gasket, but I guess that can wait. We have everything, everything sorted. Hell yeah. Well, I guess there's only one thing left to do, and that is to actually test the, uh, the fuel lines and make sure they don't leak. If I can grab that, that'll be good. There we go. Alrighty. Now we've just got to touch that negative to the engine. And fingers crossed we don't spray fuel everywhere. And would you look at that? No leaks from anywhere. No injectors. Oh yeah, I probably should wait for it to actually get fuel through all the lines. Oh yeah, we're 40 PSI. And just like that, no fuel whatsoever from any of the injectors, no fuel from the lines, everything smells nice and dry. Hell yes. That's exactly what we want to see, guys. These, uh, these braided lines are so easy to use, so user-friendly, and like, they look daunting, but they're definitely not, and uh, I'm definitely trying to get more involved in like doing a lot more of this stuff myself and you know if I make mistakes and end up getting like three extra fittings that I need then so be it we can always use it for next time and uh, I enjoy just having some fun and doing some cool stuff so yeah it's good fun I got bored <laughs> that thing looks massive in that engine bay <laughs> it looks so good so uh I'm still up in arms a little bit about what exactly I want to do with the turbo and where exactly it's going to mount to intercooler piping wise. Um, I kind of like the idea of having, you know, down and then up into that one there. But then the other thing is um, having like a straight intake pipe is kind of boring. So I'm kind of thinking what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the up and over. So that way you guys can see the turbo. And then we're going to have a massive, looks like a six inch inlet. Uh, and it's going to go like that. So it's kind of, it's not gonna go straight, it's gonna have a little bit of a curve to it. So instead of having like a nice curved piece and then a sort of nice curved piece there and then having a random straight bit, we're gonna have a nice curved piece there, nice curved piece there, and a nice curved piece there. So that's gonna look so good. I kind of just wanna put the uh, the top of the intake planner on and just, just look at that for a bit. Let, let's, just, let's just mock stuff up, this is gonna be fun. I completely forgot how heavy this was, but it looks so good. Now that we've painted everything. Let's cover up all those lines we just made, yeah? Oh, bruh. 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 It looks so good. Oh, wait, we've got, we got one more thing. we got one more thing. Let's just keep building. Let's just chuck this in place, because why not? Ugh. We could almost actually put that back on now. Dude, look, all that painting definitely pays off. I don't think there's anything else I can really put on. I mean, like, I could put the things on and stuff, but, yeah. And the other thing is, as well, I'm kind of thinking I want to have the turbo sitting up, sort of utilising that sort of section there, and sort of sitting up nice and high, nice and high and proud. That'll give us heaps of room for the dump, the wastegate, and everything. And also, another thing I wanted to add is I've decided I'm gonna do like what we did on the Falcon and we're gonna do the wastegate uh, vent atmosphere and then a V-band uh, little corner piece thing and that way we can match it up to the exhaust as well. I feel like that's going to sort of have the best of both worlds. I'm not in this car for making crazy power. I'm in it for making nice, reliable and fun and very responsive power. And not only that, I'm in it for the sound. You guys all know I love my car's sound. And so having this beautiful ball bearing T51R mod hyper gear turbo, which I have loved for years, and then having an external wastegate with the option to plumb it back in as well, I feel like it's just gonna be the best of both worlds. And that way we can always change around the stuff we're gonna be doing. So that's gonna be good. This looks absolutely amazing. I'm gonna take some photos before it goes away. Oh man, it looks so mid. So, so, so good. Oh. Just, just get that shot right there. That shot right there. So mean. 
Well, there you have it, guys. Another very successful day working on the RX-7. In the next episode, I could imagine we're going to go and we're going to be installing the alternator, uh, just doing all the little things, basically, on top of the engine. Everything but this plenum right here. So we can even start running some vacuum lines, uh, we can start putting the alternator in, we can start doing all that sort of stuff. Um, and then start working out exactly where I want to mount stuff down here because it's kind of like a, it's a bit of junk. Um, really want to do an ABS delete because that would just give us so much room here. This ABS unit is huge. Um, but kind of want to work all that out at a later date. Um, we also have some room up here to play with now because we got rid of the uh, air separator tank. So that's all out the way. Um, we've, we've freed up. Look, look at all this. Look at all this room down here. That's insane. We've freed up so much space. I also have to reconnect the uh, steering shaft after Matt took it off um, to get the turbos out. So there's a few things left to do. I really should make a list because otherwise I'm going to forget everything we need to do. Um, but yeah. But yeah, there's a few things. Yeah, alternator's got to go back in. We've got to extend the wiring for one of the injectors there. But basically everything is, start, like, everything is ba basically ready to plug back in. We can get us started, I guess. So fingers crossed, guys. It's coming along really, really nicely. God, it looks good. Oh, I'm never going to want to put the bonnet on this. It's going to look so good. Imagine if we had the turbo sticking up just high enough that it would like poke just out the bonnet here. It gets so incredibly hot right beside it and uh, it just isn't, isn't worth it, but <laughs> God, it'd be cool. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace out. Yeah. Hey, first of all, I'm not trying to be someone I'm not But there's plenty different ways for you to go and get your props You don't need to try pretending living lifestyles you ain't got That's that shit I told myself when I was low and feeling lost Learning lessons pay the cost while they watching Hugo Boss